Uh, you have to trust that work and then go out and, and, and relax and let your talent flow. And, and it's, a hard, it's an easy thing to say and it's a hard thing to do. Uh, that's where experience comes in, where you kind of can can uh, sort through that and, 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 and rely on, on uh, you know, past experiences. Uh, our guys have done it very well, I think, uh, so far. And, and uh uh, but it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, tough road to hope. Well, they are 13 and nine in the first 22 of this 23-game stretch, which wraps up tonight. The Indians with a four-game lead over the Tigers. The Tigers already won today, and they're six and a half up on third place Kansas City in the Central Division. Twins with a major league tying worst record of 49 and 83. Umpiring crew tonight at home plate: Paul Nauert, Ron Culpa. Working first base, Jerry Meals, the crew chief at second base, and Chris Conroy umpiring at third. The Indians have taken the field, and that means Corey Kluber is on the hill. The 30-year-old from Jacksonville, Florida, having a tremendous season that gets better by the start. His second half just outstanding, and overall, Kluber is 14-8 and eight with an earned run average of 3.07 as he takes the mound tonight. And in the second half, since the All-Star break, he's 5-0 and with an ERA of 1.84. Weather conditions downtown Cleveland tonight here at Progressive Field. Not bad. Partly cloudy skies. Just some light showers earlier in the day, but nothing for a while now. And we should be good to go for the remainder of the night. And the Indians, again, trying to make it three straight over a nemesis for them this season. The Minnesota Twins, who have struggled mightily against most of their opponents all year long but in the season series against the tribe the twins have won eight and dropped seven so the indians have had a a tough time with minnesota this year trying to turn that around in this series and complete a sweep brian dozier steps in to lead things off for minnesota kluber ready to work and now he'll step away as dozier steps out just as kluber was getting ready to begin his windup Now they're both synced up. Kluber's into the line, and here comes tonight's first pitch. Swung on and fouled back out of play for strike one. You know, last night, Dozier opened the game on the first pitch and hit his 31st home run on the season. 15th time that he has hit a leadoff home run in his career. Here's the 0-1. Swung on, fouled back and out of play, and quickly it's 0-2 on Dozier who comes in batting 270 with those 31 homers and 79 runs driven in. A month to go in the season, and Brian Dozier already has career highs in homers and runs driven in. Kluber has him 0-2, the right-hander into the line. Here comes his pitch. Breaking ball, missed low and outside for ball one. Corey Kluber with, with a good two-seam fastball with the sink on it. He'll throw the four-seamer and a cutter as well. And then that nasty, hard-breaking pitch with the occasional change-up mixed in. Here's the 1-2. Fastball misses up high. And the count's now 2-2 two and two on Brian Dozier. You know, Dozier, Rosie, is, is probably the, the quintessential uh, cripple hitter. In other words, he, he gets an account to where he, you have to throw him a pitch and he can tee off on it, and we've seen it all year. The 2-2. Two, two. Called strike three on the outside corner. Dozier does not like the call, and he grudgingly heads back to the dugout with some words for Paul Nauert on the way. So one gone here in the first inning, and Joe Maurer will step in. Maurer at 276 on the year with 10 homers and 47 driven in, but a hot hitter of late. Two hits last night and hitting at a 340 clip the last month. It's like the Joe Maurer of old for Minnesota. Here's the pitch to him. Swung on, line back to the mound on one hop grab by Kluber. Underhand flip to Napoli in time to retire Maurer. And Kluber has recorded two outs in a hurry. That time looked like self-defense on the mound, and he turned it into an out. A hot smash, and he gloved it about belt high. And that had the easy part, throwing out Maurer. It amazes me those guys can catch those balls, hit back in. Those, those things get there real quick. And uh, sometimes it's just a good thing your glove is where it is because you don't have much time to move it to catch it. Well, we saw two great plays by pitchers last night, Dan Otero and Zach McAllister, Indians relievers, helping their own cause. Here's Trevor Plouffe 
And he takes a strike on the inside corner. Defensively for the Indians, Brandon Geyer in left, Rajay Davis in center, Abraham Almonte in right, Mike Napoli at first, Jason Kipnis at second, Frankie Lindor at short, Jose Ramirez at third. The 0-1, breaking ball down low. Roberto Perez doing the catching for Corey Kluber, making start number 27 tonight. He's into the windup, and here comes his 1-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. The unhittable breaking ball, and Ploof missed it by a bunch for strike two. Trevor Ploof has been a hot hitter since returning from a stint on the disabled list. He had a rib injury. Here comes the 1-2 pitch. Fastball called strike three. Side retired in order. No score at Progressive Field as the Indians come to the plate in the bottom half of the first inning to face 27-year-old left-hander Pat Dean out of Naugatuck, Connecticut, a Boston College product in his first major league season. Originally drafted by the Twins back in 2010. Rajay Davis leads it off on attempt. First base side of the mound. On it is Dean, but there's nobody covering it first. And Dean can't beat Rajay Davis to the bag. Davis with a bunt single to open the bottom of the first inning. I tell you, Davis just absolutely put in the afterburners when he saw he could beat the pitcher to the, the bag. Now, Grover, former first baseman, did Maurer stray too far that time, yeah, or did he know, need to? Yeah, you, you, it's a tough play for a first baseman because if you go to if you go to cover the cover, you know, to catch that ball, then the pitcher has to get to the bag, and he wasn't going to get to the bag. Pitcher's got to communicate with you, let you know whether or not he can get to the ball, and a lot, you know, that you use, uh, you know, verbal communication. I, I know when I played first base, I, I figured anything bunted at me or to my left, I could I could catch the ball and make the tag. Anything to my right. You know, I had to let the pitcher know, take the bag, I'll take the ball. Here's Jason Kipnis, and he takes a fastball strike one from Dean. That obviously didn't happen then. But, yeah, it was, it was probably more Maurer's fault than, than the pitcher's. We'll keep an eye on Rache Davis leading the American League in stolen bases with 33. Dean delivers. Kipnis hits a bouncing ball to the second baseman, Dozier. Flip to the bag for one. Polanco to first. Double play. Two down in the inning. All right, Taylor made that time. Ground ball right to the second baseman. And that'll bring up Frankie Lindor with the bases empty. The defense for the Twins. Eddie Rosario in left. Logan Schaefer in center. Max Kepler around in right. Joe Maurer at first. Brian Dozier at second. Jorge Polanco, the shortstop. Trevor Plouffe around at third with Juan Centeno doing the catching for Pat Dean at 6'1", about 200 pounds. Fastball cutter, curve and changeup from the lefty, not overpowering. Here's his pitch, and Lindor takes a breaking ball low and in. Switch hitter in from the right side is Frankie Lindor. Came in batting 312, seventh best in the American League, the pitch. Outside and high for a ball, 2-0. Jose Altuve of the Astros leading the way at 352, and he would have to go into a colossal slump not to win the batting crown this year. He, um, Here's the 2-0. Swung on. There's a high fly ball to right. Settling under it is Kepler, and he'll make the catch to retire the side. What do you got on Altuve? He's going into a slump. His batting average has dropped three points in the last uh, three tenths of a point in the last, or three hundreds. Inning for the tribe. Jim Rosenhouse along with Mike Hargrove tonight. Tom Hamilton with the night off, but Hammy will be back on Friday night. Miguel Sano, the leadoff hitter, takes a breaking ball for strike one. Sano, big designated hitter, right-handed batter, hitting 244 with 20 home runs and 54 driven in. Here comes Kluber's 0-1 pitch, and it's up high for a ball. Counts now 1-1 one one on Sano. Corey Kluber going through a a stretch reminiscent of his second half two years ago. He was so good, he won the Cy Young Award. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball swung on and missed, and it's 1-2. and two. And Of course, the kind of guy, you you know, as a, as a defender, you like you like playing behind him, and not because, you know, of who he is, but because he throws strikes. He never gets flustered. He always seems to be in control, and 
and radiates a lot of confidence to the players around him. He has the sign from Perez. Here's his one, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. That devastating breaking ball strikes out another. Three strikeouts to the first four hitters for Corey Kluber. One away in the second, and Eddie Rosario will step in. Now Kluber coming off a win his last time out at Texas on Friday night. Allowed just one run in six innings. Struck out seven. Had to work for it. Threw 113 pitches in those six innings, but didn't get flustered in some long at-bats. Here's the pitch to Rosario, and it's in there for strike one. Rosario hitting 269 with eight home runs, 30 driven in. The Texas hitter's patient, and they spoil a lot of good pitches, and Kluber didn't let it get to him. Here's the 0-1. And that's outside for a ball. And the count's now one and one. Well, they've got a lot of dangerous hitters in their lineup. Moreland and Beltran and Beltran. And uh, they just keep coming at you. You know, it's a, it can be a tough lineup to face. One and one the count on Rosario. Left-handed batter. The pitch to him. Waved at and missed. Another hard-breaking pitch low and in. And it's one and two. Now he's won six in a row as Kluber. That's the longest winning streak in his career. He's had nine consecutive quality starts. The second longest active streak in the major leagues right now. Here's the one-two. Down low, two and two. Justin Verlander put together his tenth consecutive quality start today for the Tigers. Safe to say he's back and throwing the way that Justin Verlander has in the past. And he's a big reason why the Tigers are hanging tough. Just four back of the Indians after a win today over the White Sox. Now the 2-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Kluber strikes out another. That's four strikeouts to the first five hitters. Okay, Rosie, tell me what a tell me what a quality start is. Some people disagree with this, but by I'm, definition, that. <laughs> by definition, six innings, three runs allowed. Yeah. I wonder, but I wonder you, if it changed. You were saying though, was it the last time you were here? You were saying how that's just okay? Yes, I was probably talking through my hat last time because I had those leg cramps. But, yeah, That's it's true. just okay. You're right. There's a swing and a liner back to the mound. Knocked down by Kluber. Picks it up. Throws to first. And Jorge Polanco's retired for the third out in the inning. Bertie Tempest, a longtime Cleveland Indian managing scout. Scouted. I, I learned a lot from, from Bertie talking to him in instructional league. Community by partnering with local businesses like Mobon Enterprises. Mobon Enterprises is your MVP in all your transportation, warehousing, and logistics needs. We get it done. Mike Napoli leads it off for the tribe. Bottom of the second underway, and he fouls a pitch upstairs off to the first base side for a strike, and it's one and one on Napoli. Facing Twins left-hander Pat Dean. Tribe nothing, Twins nothing. As Dean goes back to work, the left-hander delivers. And there's a swing and a hammer shot down the left field line. Foul off the windows of the Terrace Club. Napoli was out front a little bit. He's ready for it, wasn't he? He was. 29 home runs, 88 runs driven in for Mike Napoli. The 1-2. Swung on, fouled off at home plate. Count remains one and two. Career best in home runs, 30. 92 is high in runs driven in. Now he is closing in on both of those numbers. Dean, the left-hander, into the wind, his pitch. Swung on, line, base hit into left field. Napoli starts the second with a leadoff single. Second straight inning. The Indians have put that leadoff hitter on base. And Carlos Santana will step in, the designated hitter tonight. The Indians take on the Marlins in interleague play Friday night. Plus a Sugardale Dollar Dog Night with postgame fireworks. So some good stuff Friday night. Hope to see you out here. Get that Labor Day weekend started with Indians baseball. Indians.com for your tickets. Here's the pitch to Santana. He swings, pops one up to left. After it is Rosario, and he'll make the catch. 
One down, Napoli retreats to first. So the fish are coming to town, huh? They are. A late interleague series. One of my favorite teams. The Marlins? No. <laughs> oh, my bad. Sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't want to go there, Grover. Me neither. would be right. Jose Ramirez, the batter. Ramirez, switch hitter. Right side. The pitch to him. Down low for a ball. 1-0 the count. That stuff stays with you a little bit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> As it should, uh, can't imagine. You can't scrape it off, I don't think. No. Here's the 1-0. Swung on, popped up foul and out of play. Counts now 1-1 one and one on Ramirez. Well, they're in contention as well this year's edition of the Marlins. A couple of games over 500. Trying to hang in there in the wild card chase. Well, Don Mattingly has done a great job down there, hasn't he? He really has. Here's the pitch to Ramirez, and he lines it up the middle. A base hit into center field. So Jose Ramirez kept, just keeps right on hitting. Came in batting 305. Has a base hit in his first at bat here tonight. Indians, a couple of men aboard with only one out for Brandon Geyer. He's had some injuries to deal with, Don Mattingly, and has kept that team above 500 most of the year. Geyer hitting 254 with eight home runs, 26 driven in. 313, though, since joining the Indians. And he's played a lot in the last week as the Indians have faced six left handed starting pitchers in their last seven games. The pitch. Breaking ball in there for a strike. No score. Bottom half of the second inning. Tribe with a threat going against Pat Dean, who came in with an ERA of 6.24. And this is eighth career Major League start. The pitch swung on, popped up. Right side going back into the outfield and foul territory is Maurer, who makes the catch. And they did call for the infield fly rule on that. As Maurer was not that deep into shallow right. Two down. Abraham Almonte will step in. Almonte at 276 with a home run and 13 runs driven in. And if you haven't heard, and this relates directly to Almonte, who is not eligible for postseason play, the Indians have acquired Coco Crisp from the Oakland Athletics, the former Cleveland Indian who made his major league debut and spent his first four major league seasons with the tribe. He'll be back in an Indian's uniform starting Friday night and eligible for postseason. Almonte switch hitter right side and he swings and rips one down the third baseline. That's a fair ball headed into the corner. Scoring is Napoli. On his way to third is Ramirez. In the second with a slide is Almonte and the Indians take the lead 1-0. Abraham Almonte with his 15th double snuck it in between the third baseman Plouffe and the third base bag. And the Indians have a run on the board and runners at second and third with two down. Now Almonte has at times been productive at the plate and he puts the Indians on the board early with a one nothing lead. Here's Roberto Perez. The pitch to him. Swing and a miss. Tribe number nine hitter, batting 148, a home run, eight runs driven in. So Coco Crisp, that deal is official in exchange for minor league relief pitcher Colt Hines. He goes the other way. Is he in town yet? I don't believe yeah, so. I didn't see him, so I, didn't, I was wondering. I know the, the A's were in Houston, and he was going to go back to Oakland and gather his belongings and then head east. Here's the pitch to Perez on the inside corner for a strike. So it'll be interesting to see what the dynamic is now in September because <laughs> Almonte certainly can help the Indians get to postseason, but they'll want to make sure that Chris sure. Play, plays enough and yeah. is sharp. If they do make postseason, he could be a, a key contributor. Here's the pitch to Perez. 
breaking ball low and in, and it's one and two. Well, I think he'll help. I mean, you know, you get the added experience, and, and uh, I certainly think he'll help. I'm, I'm curious as to how they'll use him. We, you know, they're gonna, he's going to start getting the, the majority of the playing time over Almonte, and, and it's going to be interesting to see what Terry does. Here's the one-two. Fastball just missed outside, and Perez checked his swing. So it's two and two on Perez. Now the Indians are on the board. They have a run in here in the second inning and lead it one nothing. With two down, it could become a big inning. If Perez can come through here with Ramirez at third and Almonte at second. Dean sets and delivers. Low and in for ball three. And Perez, after falling behind 0-2, has worked the count full. And waiting on deck. Top of the lineup, Raj A. Davis. The Twins have lost 12 in a row. And you can pin a lot of that on a pitching staff that has struggled all season long. The 3-2. Swung on, and there's a high fly ball to center, not deep. Settling under it over in right center is the center fielder Schaefer to make the catch. Side retired. Indians get on the scoreboard with a run on three hits. We head to the third. Indians manager Mike Cargrove, Tom Hamilton with the night off tonight. Hammy will be back on Friday night. Max Kepler leading it off against Corey Kluber with a 1-0 lead. Kluber delivers, and Kepler takes a breaking ball for strike one. Kepler in an 0-for-14 skid. The rookie outfielder has seen his average dip to 243. 15 home runs, though, and 58 driven in. Here's Kluber's 0-1. Breaking ball missed inside, and it's one and one. I think he got ten of those home runs the last their last trip in here. He did, yeah. He got four of them and ten RBIs in a four-game series where the Twins in the first three games went wild offensively. The one-one is cued slowly up the third baseline, and that kicks foul. Good thing it did. Kepler would have been safe at first had that stayed fair. Instead, the count's one and two. He comes back to home plate. Try baseball brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Start your next adventure in the first ever RAV4 Hybrid at 34 miles per gallon city. You can go over 500 miles on a tank of gas with the RAV4 Hybrid from Toyota. 1-0 Indians in front. Bottom third of the Twins lineup doing against Kluber, who has struck out four of the first six hitters he's faced. The right-hander into the wide. Here's his 1-2. Swung on, and there's a high fly ball deep center. Davis back, looks up. It's gone. And this game is tied at 1. 16th home run on the year for Max Kepler. And his fifth against Tribe Pitching. My goodness. Now, the Twins are having a rough year. There's no... No question about that. But they may have found an outfielder for years to come, and Max Kepler, he looks like a keeper. Now the game is tied at one on the first hit allowed by Kluber tonight. Here's Juan Centeno, who takes a pitch down low for ball one. Centeno hitting 257, a couple of home runs, 20 driven in. Pitch to him. Fastball strike on the outside corner to even the count at one and one. Centeno, another hitter who's had good success against the Indians. Eight for 18 against Tribe pitching this year. The pitch to him. Swung on, bouncing ball to first. Napoli's up with it. He'll race to the bag just ahead of Centeno for the first out in the inning. So one away for Logan Schaefer. Logan Schaefer, not too long ago playing independent baseball in the Atlantic League. The Twins with a couple of players from the same team in the Atlantic League in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and Schaefer was one. They signed up to a contract the Twins did in early June, spent the rest of the year at AAA Rochester, and then just called up in time for this series on Monday night. 
He's two for six in the series, and he grounds one to the right side. Up with it, Kipnis. Throws on to first. In time, two down. Back to the top of the lineup, Brian Dozier will step in. Twins have lost 12 in a row. Their franchise record for consecutive losses, 14. The 1982 Twins. Grover, that was their first year in the Metrodome. They're all excited. New stadium, indoor baseball, and they had a rough year. Now they're in the new ballpark. Lost 102 games that year in the Metrodome. Yeah. You Did you work, like that place? you got to work at that. Oh, to lose you 102. you to uh, no, I never did really like it. You know, it's, uh, Here's the pitch to Dozier, low and outside. Ball the, there were rumors going around that, you know, when the Twins hit, they turned the blowers on, they you know, circulated the air out, and when the other team hit, they reversed, they turned them off. It, you know, just, it's like. Here's the 1-0 pitch, down low, 2-0. and Do you think those rumors were there in 82 when they had that rough year? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Only when the, in 87 when they're starting to, to win World Series. Now, wait a minute. The blowers are on. The 2-0. There's a pitch down low, 3-0. and You know, ball go up, and, you, and if you took your eyes off the ball, you know, like a, like a pop fly or a fly ball, if you took your eyes off the ball early on, you, you couldn't pick it back up. You, I mean, you just you couldn't. Next pitch to Dozier. Misses low and outside for ball four. Brian Dozier with a two-out walk. And the turf always seemed to be you know what was tough more about that bouncy yeah. than, than yeah. other artificial surfaces. You know what was really tough about that ballpark was the clubhouse. You had to walk down this flight, two two flights of stairs to get down to field level. The walk down wasn't bad. The walk up was a booger. So let me ask you this. Were you ever, were you ever ejected from a game there? Probably. I don't remember, but probably. That had to be a long walk. If you had to go up those stairs after being thrown out. Here's Joe Maurer, and Maurer takes a pitch down low for ball one. Well, that team, the 82 Twins, they had some building blocks for what would become a World Series team. Ken Herbeck was on that club, Gary Gaetti, Tom Brunanski. Throw to first, back safely is Dozier. Frank Viola was on that team, was, too. Was uh, Puckett on that team yet? He, no. I don't think so. Huh? No, not yet. You know, when Kirby Puckett first came up, he hit the ball to the right, everything hit to the right side. Like at the second baseman to the line, everything he hit went that direction. It's amazing. 1-0 and the count on Maurer. Here's the pitch. Down low, 2-0. and so he'd take dead aim at the baggie if he could? And yeah. I, yeah, yeah they, in right field? I, I hit a home run there, one of my few. I hit a home run there and broke my bat when I hit it. How was that? That's how strong you were. Huh? That's ex- Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I forgot that part of the story. Yeah, see, this is, you have an opportunity here, Grover. To- it's amazing how much better you get the farther you get away from the field. It really is. 2-0 the count on Maurer in a 1-1 game. The Twins have tied it here on the leadoff home run by Max Kepler. We're in the third. Kluber delivers. Strike called on the outside corner. 2-1 the count. You know, the Twins trying to avoid what happened in 82. The Indians win tonight. It'll be the, the second longest losing streak for Minnesota. Their 13-game losing skid. They had one in 1961. The 2 1 pitch. Inside ball three. Well, all of a sudden, Kluber has lost what normally is very good control. Came in, averaging just two walks every nine innings, more than nine strikeouts, and giving the Indians just about seven innings a start. And they need it tonight. The bullpen had to work hard last night. Extra innings the night before. Here's the 3-1. Runner on the move, and the pitch is fouled off. First base side past the dugout. Now it's 3-2 and two on Joe Maurer. That 3-1 pitch right there is always a really dangerous pitch for uh, for your ball club to, 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 to throw and be in that situation. You walk the other guy on four straight pitches, went 2-0 on this hitter. 3-1 uh, can be 
tough, a tough, uh, tough pitch to make. Now payoff pitch coming to Dozier, who you would expect is off again. With two down, three and two the count. So Napoli plays behind him, and there he goes. And the pitch is bounced to the second baseman, Kipnis. Up with it, throws to first. In time to retire Maurer and the Twins. But Minnesota ties the game on the Max Kepler home run. We head to the bottom of the third. 1-1 here at first we have reached the Liberty Ford Grand Slam giveaway inning. Tonight's contestant, David Campbell of Lorraine. And Davis takes a strike from Pat Dean. 0-1 the count on Davis. 1-1 the score. Bottom half of the third. Dean right back into the wind, his pitch, and Davis swings, lines it back up the middle. A couple of hops, though, picked up by Dozier, who spins, fires, and he gets him at first. They were playing Rajay Davis to pull, and the second baseman, Dozier, was almost right behind the bag at second, and that helped him make the pickup and the throw, and he retires Davis. So Rajay Davis is one for two after a bunt base hit his first time up. They have a tried player hits a grand slam here in the third. David Campbell of Lorraine wins a 2016 Ford Mustang convertible. Visit LibertyFord.com to enter for your chance to win. Jason Kipnis steps to the plate, takes a strike on the outside corner. And David has an added bonus tonight. If it happens, Mike Hargrove will deliver that beautiful 2016 Ford Mustang convertible right to your driveway. There's a swing and a pop-up. Foul down the left side, bending toward the seats, out of play. I'll probably keep that about a week or so okay. just to make sure it's running right. You wouldn't want to give it to someone no. and not work sure out the, the case. tires are round and the radio works, seats recline. It's that, the, it's that huh? attention to customer service hey. that's second <laughs> to none. Here's the pitch to Kipnis. Breaking ball low and away. And for only a special few. Well, we've been trying to give away that car for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. Here's the one, two. Swung on, bouncing ball into the shift on the right side. Dozier's there again, and he throws on the first in time. So two down in the inning. And Francisco Lindor will step in. He flied to right his first time up. Indians and Twins tied at one. Get priority access to 2016 potential postseason tickets by purchasing 2017 Indian season tickets now. You can do it by the deadline of September 13th, and you'll get priority access to all potential postseason games this year. Lindor pounds one foul outside of third for strike one. Visit Indians.com slash postseason for all the details on postseason priority access with season tickets for next year. Here comes the 0-1 from Dean. Swung on, ground ball to short. Up with it, Polanco throws to first in time to retire Lindor and the Indians who go in order in the third. Three complete a progressive field. Twins one, Tribe one. When the Indians take on the Marlins. Trevor Plouffe leads it off facing Corey Kluber. Kluber delivers, and there's a swing and a high pop fly. Foul territory, third base side of the infield. Ramirez near the fencing, and he makes the catch not far from the camera bay. One pitch, one out. Well, I'm going to tell you, I think, I think that Jose Ramirez is the story of the year. Maybe the story of the decade. Here's a guy that, that uh, was identified early, I, you know, I think at least in my mind, that he was a, he was a uh, utility player. And uh, stuck around him. He was a good utility player. Got his chance to play and absolutely made the best of it. He's played himself right into a regular and has done a tremendous job both offensively and defensively. Miguel Sano will step in. Here's the pitch. Inside, ball one. You could argue that he's the, the team most valuable player, and there's a lot of candidates. Yeah, you're right. But you could, it'd be a good argument. He'd be right in that conversation. Yeah. Here's the 1-0. Swung on. High fly ball. Shallow right. Charging in Almonte into foul territory. And this one ends up several rows back. You know, we were talking earlier about uh, about Sharon doing this. We were. Yeah, we Did were. We? we were laughing about it. Oh, boy. 
I think that you would. Sharon you know, Hargrove. If she, if she said in, yeah, if she said in when Hammy was out, she said in like I'm doing, she might not do a good job, but you would not be bored. <laughs> <laughs> and that's half the battle. Oh, I would. It would be, it would be priceless. <laughs> Here comes the 1-1 pitch. Swing and a miss, and it counts one and two. Going to run that by Curtis? Yeah. See what he says? Second Tuesday of next week, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Sanoa strikeout victim first time around. Kluber has struck out four while walking one. Here comes his one-two pitch. Fastball up high. Two and two. Indians a run on four hits. Minnesota one run on just one hit. The home run by Kepler last inning. Here comes Kluber's two-two delivery. Breaking ball poked to the first base side. Scooped up by Napoli. Flips to Kluber covering, and he's there ahead of Sano. Two up, two down here in the fourth. And Kluber continues to be steady so far. Wait, you looked at last night's game, and the starter was out in the second inning, a, a tough one for Josh Tomlin. In the postgame handshake line, Terry Francona was right behind Corey Kluber, and I asked him, I said, hey, did, were you giving him a hard time about having to go deep into this? He said, yeah, I told him his pitch count tonight. 150, 155, somewhere in there. <laughs> Which, obviously, they would, yeah. they would never do. But point being, Kluber gives you seven strong most times out, especially the way he's been rolling of late. Eddie Rosario, the hitter, takes a strike on the outside corner. And, Mike, did, did that matter to you in, in terms of how you manage the day before someone pitches like that and, and certainly the day after? Well, I... Um I'll tell you right after this pitch, how's that? Perfect. Here's the 0-1 inside. You know, you go out and, and, and you try to, you try to, ne- we try to never throw a pitcher, any pitcher, more than three innings, like one, three days in a row. You follow what I'm saying? A total of, yeah. you know, however many, but never pitch them three days in a row. And uh, here comes the 1-1. Swung on, fouled off. And there are times when you, you know, like last night, you have to get into your bullpen early, and guys, you know, you guys are out there, you know, getting their, their third day in with, you know, total of six innings. Um, and then, and the guy the next day, most most of the starters, you know, they know, hey, look, I've got to go long. I, there been, there was one time that I, that uh, I had a pitcher on the mound, and uh, here's the one-two pitch, swung on, bouncing ball to the second baseman Kipnis. Throws on to first in time. Side retired. Want to finish now or next? Yeah. It, it, anyway, I went out to him and I said, and he was kind of, you know, he was, he was kind of you know, getting, let the umpire get to him and all that. And, and I went out to him and you'll be whisked around the globe with four intensely authentic tastes, like the creamy zip of great tzatziki, the spicy heat of Chinese Szechuan, and the exotic allure of tikka masala. I like exotic. Subway even has the steakhouse taste of Brazilian picanha. Please, passport to flavor chips now at Subway for a limited time only. Mike Napoli leads it off for the Indians. Bottom half of the fourth inning. Left-hander Pat Dean delivers, and Napoli chops one foul at home plate. The count is one and two on Napoli, who singled his first time up and scored the Indians' run on a double off the bat of Abraham Almonte back in the second inning. This game is tied at one as Dean is into the line. Here comes his one-two pitch. Swung on. Here's a tapper to the shortstop. Up with it, Palanco. Throws on the run in time to retire Napoli. And let's pause 10 seconds for station ID on the Indians radio network. Jim Rosenhouse, Mike Hargrove working tonight's ball game. Tom Hamilton with the night off. Hammy will be back on Friday night. And the Indians host the Marlins right here at Progressive Field. 1-1 the score. Carlos Santana, the batter. He swings and launches one high and deep to left center. Bleacher bound. Home run, Santana. And the Indians are back in front 2-1. to one.
number 28 for Carlos Santana, a new career high. Two at-bats, two pitches. Made the second one count, didn't he? Oh, a yeah, blast into the bleachers in left center for Carlos Santana. And the Indians have reclaimed the lead. Dean delivers to Jose Ramirez, and it's down low for ball one. Now, Carlos Santana, who in two separate seasons had hit 27 home runs, has a new career best of 28. Ramirez takes a pitch outside for ball two. In addition to career high 28 home runs, that's his. 28 home runs, the franchise record for a switch hitter in a season. Here's the 2-0 pitch. That's in there for a strike. Counts now 2-1 and one on Ramirez. With a wind kicking up here at Progressive Field on occasion tonight. The 2-1. Down low, 3-1. and one. Cooler temperatures coming, and uh, I guess this is... Those cool temperatures blowing in here. Kind of feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Game time temperature 75 tonight. Next pitch to Ramirez is outside for a ball. Jose Ramirez draws a walk. Indians have a base runner with one out in the fourth. Drive up two to one. And Brandon Geyer will step to the plate. You know, the Indians with a good weekend of games and promotions with the Marlins coming in. And then next week, starting Labor Day, that's a night game, Labor Day Monday at 7-10. The Indians have a four-game series against the Houston Astros with great midweek ticket bargains like $10 upper bleacher seats and $13 district tickets. Go to Indians.com for all your ticket needs. Throw to first, back safely as Ramirez. You know, Pat Dean was a third-round pick of the Twins back in 2010, and it's been a, a long, slow climb through the, the minor league system before he finally reached the big leagues this year. And his next pitch is up and in to Geyer for ball one. He's out of Boston College. Last year at AAA, a 12-game winner. ERA under three. Spent a good portion of this season at AAA as well. Here's his pitch. Swung on, popped up, shallow right. Coming in, Max Kepler, and the right fielder makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Retreating to first, Jose Ramirez. Two down for Abraham Almonte. It's interesting. Dean's only win. He came in one and four with an ERA of 6.24. That came against Seattle back in May. Seven strong innings. He allowed just two runs. Tonight he's matched up against Corey Kluber and throwing fairly well. That night he was better than Felix Hernandez. Got his major league win with the Mariners going with King Felix that night. And he was better than him over seven innings. And while he hasn't quite matched Kluber pitch for pitch, he certainly kept his team in the game. And that's been a struggle point for the Twins this season. They're starting pitching at five and a half runs a game. Dead last in the American League. Here's Almonte. The pitch to him. Swung on, and there's a fly ball right center. Long run Schaefer. He's there, and he makes the catch to retire Almonte and the Indians. But they grab the lead on the Santana home run. And after four innings at Progressive Field, Indians two, the Twins one. And today, they're the second place team. They beat the White Sox with a run in the bottom of the ninth. Here's the pitch to Jorge Polanco, and it's on the outside corner for strike one. Corey Kluber back to work. Good one going for Kluber. He's allowed one hit. It was a home run. He has struck out four and walked one. He's into the windup, and here comes his 0-1 pitch. Low and outside, and it counts now 1-1. One and one. Grover, you've had a, a chance to watch Kluber now over several seasons. And here comes the 1-1 one first to Polanco. Swung on, line drive to right. That'll get down for a base hit. Polanco's aboard with a leadoff single. 
But as a manager, his consistency, is, is that the most valuable thing you can have on a pitching staff? Well, that's what you want out of your number one guy is, is to, you know, to, to know what it is you're going to get out of him every, you know, within certain parameters, know what you're going to get out of him every time he takes, a, you know, takes the mound. Um, you know, it, it makes your it makes your job a lot easier. I mean, you you, you build that confidence and trust in him, and and uh, and he comes through. I mean, he'd be, he you know more times than not, he comes through. Now he's facing Max Kepler, who hit the home run his first time up, and he rips one to first, caught by Napoli, and he's right at the bag to double off Polanco. Mike Napoli with a fine play. Snaring a hot line drive off the bat of Max Kepler, and he turns it into a double play. It might have gone foul had Napoli not made the catch, but well, he grabbed it, and Polanco had no chance to get back. Now, Mike Napoli with a fine play defensively, two down, base is empty. Here's the pitch to Juan Centeno. The catcher takes it down low, ball one. Now Kluber with a chance to have a quick inning. He's into the line. Here's his 1-0. Down low, 2-0. He's only at 54 pitches here in the fifth inning. We talked about it earlier. The Indians could use a night to give the bullpen a break. They have an off day tomorrow. Here's the 2-0. Outside, 3-0. And Kluber trying to do what he has done for a good portion of this season, and especially so in the second half. He's been just tremendous. What a month of August. 4-0, and an ERA of 2.20. As he pours a fastball right in there to Centeno. 3-1 and the count. Outfield plays Centeno straight away. Kluber's into the wind. Here's his 3-1 pitch. Swung on, fouled off, and the count runs full. Kluber is, is, is so good at, at, at staying on his line, if, if you follow what I'm saying. That, and when he stays on his line, he stays in, he directs everything toward the plate, then then he's golden. The 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Well, he blew him away with a high fastball that time. Centeno's retired for the last out in the inning. And he falls off his line just a little bit. He falls, and by that man, he, he kind of pulls off to the left of the first base side. And when he does that, it makes his arm drag. And... Roberto Perez leads it off for the Indians. First pitch swinging, launches one to deep right center. Home run, Roberto Perez. And the Tribe now leads it 3-1. to one. Second home run of the season for Perez. And slowly but surely, he has come around a little bit at the plate. Heading into play last Friday, his batting average was still right around the 100 mark. It's up over 150 now, and he's just hit his second home run of the season. So some promising developments for the Indians catcher, Roberto Perez, offensively. Here's Rajay Davis. The pitch to him. Down low, ball one. Davis reached on a bunt single to open the first. And then bounced to second his last time up. Twins shift for him. The pitch is swung on and ripped on one hop. The short hop pick up by Polanco. And the shortstop guns him down at first base. Wow. I tell you what, watching, that, watching Polanco at shortstop, uh, especially the first game they played, he made a couple outstanding plays. Um, has nice, sweet hands. The only thing that was wrong with him the other night when he made those plays is that, that he, you know, he cranked up and he's a little erratic with his accuracy. But... But uh, he's got it. He's got good hands. You know, the Twins have have run through some shortstops in recent seasons, but 
But Polanco, when we've seen him, he's impressive. There's a pitch down low to Jason Kipnis. 3-1, to one, Indians in front. Bottom half of the fifth inning, one down, base is empty. Kipnis is 0 for 2. Here's Dean's pitch, and it's up and in for a ball. Well, you watch Polanco. He's got he's got really busy feet. I mean, and, and, and you tell you know you, you tell people this that that you know you catch for ground balls with your feet, and people like look at you like you're nuts. But if you've got good feet and you get and you get in position and play to and through the ball, everything frees up and allows you to have good hands. The 2-0 strike called on the outside corner, two and one. It always amazed me watching Manny Ramirez play, play in the outfield that, that some of the catches he'd make, the positions he'd get his feet in some of the times. And somebody's telling me one day about how. Here's the 2 1 to Kipnis down low. Now Manny wasn't a good outfielder. And, and I said, oh, no, no. You, Manny's great. Manny has great hands because he gets his feet in some positions. Sometimes you swear that he, he needs a net to catch the ball. The 3 1. Outside and low, ball four. Kipnis he, draws he, a one-out he, walk. He'd catch it and, he, and, uh, and did a great. I thought Manny was a. I thought Manny was an above-average outfielder. Uh, you know, once he got over his shyness and uh, got a little more aggressive in the outfield, I, I thought Manny was an outstanding outfielder. And nobody ever thinks about that part of his game because he swung the bat so well. Here's Frankie Lindor. Lindor's 0 for two. He's flying to right, bounced to short. Time for this week's Mr. Tire Sunday Score Oil Chain Special. Final score of last Sunday's game, totaled three runs. Lindor bunts and bunts it foul. That means this coming Sunday, $3 oil changes at any participating Mr. Tire location. To schedule an appointment, visit mrtire.com slash baseball. $3 oil changes coming up Sunday. Just saying, Grover, in case any of your vehicles need an oil change. My wife went down and got an oil change just a couple days ago. I offered to do it for her. Here's the pitch to Lindor. Up and in. One and one. What trying, happened? I was trying to be the nice person that I really am deep down. And uh, I said, I'll go do that for you. And she said, sure, whatever. I'm not sure what she meant by that. Wow. <laughs> was she doubting your ability to pretty, change the oil? Pretty much. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Fun attempt. First base side up the line. Foul. So it's 1-2 and two on Lindor. One out. Runner at first. That's Jason Kipnis. Tribe up 3-1. to one. Our injury report is sponsored by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, a proud partner of the Indians. For a team of injury lawyers with experience, resources, and results, call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Jan Gomes still making that good progress coming back from a shoulder separation now. The Indians had to make some roster moves today with Coco Crisp being acquired. They brought up a reliever from Columbus, Percy Garner. Gomes has been transferred to the 60-day DL. The 1-2 swung on, fouled off. Count remains 1-2. and two. But Chris Antonetti, the Indians president of baseball operations, said it. That would make him eligible September 16th, which is right about the time where he would be physically ready to go as well. So it's not as if they're, they're bumping back his return, anything like that. It fits in with, with where he is rehab-wise. Here's the 1-2. Swung on, line drive, base hit in the left field. Moving up 90 feet, Kipnis. Frankie Lindor with a base hit. Indians now with seven hits on the night. And it's first and second with only one away. General managers and presidents like Chris Antonetti and Michael Chernoff, they can absolutely make that roster sing. They get it fine-tuned to where they – I, I, I love watching – I never like a lot of changes in, in a roster, but uh, but when it's done with a purpose the way our people have done it, uh, Chris and Mike have done a great job, uh, you know, get, getting people up here to help and uh, and making the moves that, 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 you know, project down the line to make us even better. It's just it's amazing to watch those guys work. Well, they, they made that move with Gomes today, which doesn't really impact one way or another his potential return. And, again, things going very well for Jan on the comeback trail. They also brought up Percy Garner from Columbus, a young right-hander who has been extremely impressive in the minor leagues. Sean Armstrong optioned out after the 
the long night of relief pitching last night. They want to get a fresh arm in here in time for tonight's game. Here's Mike Napoli. One for two, a single back in the second inning. The pitch to him. Down low, ball one. Good stop by Centeno, the catcher on a pitch in the dirt. Well, they have Dean on the ropes in his first major league season. ERA up over six. Indians trying to put together the knockout blow here in the fifth inning. And the Twins do have activity going in their bullpen. Neil Allen, the pitching coach, had been out to the mound for a visit before Napoli's at bat. The 1-0. Down low, 2-0. J.T. Chagua, a right-hander, is loosening for the Twins. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Down low, 3-0 to Napoli. You let him hit here, Rosie? Absolutely. Okay, here we go. Your your job's on the line. You make that choice, huh? I'll bet Terry Francona (laughs) wants him swinging away, too. I'll bet he does, too. He gives the green lights to most hitters. And Napoli's certainly in that group. Here's the 3-0 pitch. Swung on and foul back. (laughs) He was locked and loaded. He was. One of the best 3-0 hitters I ever saw, I really ever saw, was Paul Sorrento. You remember Paul Sorrento? Yes. 3-0, it was like a kid in a candy store. I mean, he just he was a very good 3-0 hitter. He's uh, the assistant hitting coach with the Angels. Now. Yes. Now the 3-1 swung on and fouled off, and that got a piece of the catcher, Centeno who is down in pain behind home plate. He's going to need some time. I'm not sure I got a good piece of him. Nope. Trying to pull it together. Mike Napoli, a former catcher, checking in on him. Ooh. That did not get a a good spot. No, it didn't. (laughs) It didn't. Nobody made him put that gear on. Indians baseball brought to you in part by Wayside Furniture. Stop by Wayside Furniture in Akron for their back-to-school offer, a free backpack filled with school supplies just for stopping in. Off day tomorrow for the Tribe as they finish up this string of 23 straight days of baseball. 13-9 and nine over that stretch, and that included that road trip out west that saw them go 2-5. and five. For the most part, they played... They battled their way through. They played very well here. The 3-2. Just outside. Ball four. Napoli draws the walk. And now the bases are loaded for Carlos Santana. Santana homered his last time up. His career best 28th home run. And he's up there now with the bases loaded. The Indians do not have a grand slam this season. But he steps in and will not get the chance to face Pat Dean. Dean's night is done. Boy, he's shaking his head as he's pulled with one out. And the base is loaded, trailing 3-1. to one. But Paul Molitor says that Agua, a 6'3", 200-pounder out of Louisiana, 25 years of age, was having a good season down at AAA Rochester as a closer. And since being called up to the major leagues, this will be his 11th appearance. He's 0-1 with an ERA of 6.52. So Shagwa will face Carlos Santana. Switch hitter turns around, bats from the left side for the first time tonight. Base is loaded for the Tribe. Indians up 3-1. Here's the pitch. Swung on, driven down the line, foul down the right field line. Wow. Santana smoked it, but pulled it foul. 0-1 to count on Carlos Santana. And again, Indians do not have a grand slam this season. Santana can change that right here. 
Chagua out of Rice University. Strong college baseball program, particularly on the pitching side. In fact, he was a college teammate of Tyler Duffy, who has started several games for the Twins this season. Here's the 0-1. Down low, 1-1 one one the count. Chagua had an ERA in the minor leagues this year between AA and AAA of 1.35. The right-hander working from the stretch with one out. Here's his pitch. Swung on, line drive, base hit right field. That'll score one at least, and that's it. Kipnis scores. Throw comes quickly to second, and just there in time is Napoli. And the Indians take a 4-1 lead on the RBI single by Carlos Santana. Boy, a rocket off the bat of Santana. Looks like he's locked in tonight. All right, Grover, he's, he's had a, for him, a, more of a consistent season than, than he's been able to put together in, in some of his other years with the Indians, but a little more consistency this year from him. What? I, I think, I mean, it's just my opinion. I think it has to do with the people that are hitting around him. You know, that, uh, that you know, they're, they're, they're having to decide whether they're pitched to Napoli or him or Ramirez. And uh, three pretty good hitters. So I think he's getting a lot more of a good pitches hitting. He's doing something with them, which, which is good. Here's Ramirez, the pitch to him, low and outside. Jose Ramirez has singled and walked in two trips. Tribe four, Twins one. Indians have four runs on eight base hits. Now the set. And the 1-0. Swung on, fly ball down the right field line. If it's fair, it's trouble. Fair ball, and it trickles into the corner. One run is in. Here comes Napoli. He scores. Holding at third is Santana. And into second with a two-run double, Jose Ramirez. Indians now lead it 6-1. to one. Ramirez continues to sizzle with men in scoring position. Came in hitting 367, which was sixth best in the league with runners in scoring position. And he comes through again. Double number 34. Now 60 runs driven in for Jose Ramirez. We talked about it earlier. You have to put him in the conversation as, as a team MVP candidate. No, Lonnie I, Chisenhall to pinch hit for the Tribe. I think you're right, Rose. I, you know, it's just... Chisenhall takes a breaking ball for strike one. How many big situations has he come up in this year? And come up with a big hit. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, he knows how to hit. He uses the whole field and, and, uh, and, and makes contact. Chisholm Hall with the infield in. Only one out. Second and third. The pitch to him. Swung on. Line to left center. Long run Schaefer. And he makes the running catch. Tagging and scoring is Santana. Holding in second is Ramirez. But Chisholm Hall gets the runner in from third. And the Indians now lead it 7-1. to one. Lonnie Chisenhall with a sack fly. And for Chisenhall, it's RBI number 49. And the Indians have put together the big inning here against Twins pitching. And, well, you have to take advantage of a team that has struggled on the mound all season long, and the Indians are doing that tonight. Here's Abe Almonte, another switch hitter, turns around, bats left-handed. Ninth man to bat in the inning. Almonte, one for two with an RBI double his first time up. Here's the pitch. And Chagua leaves it inside for ball one. J.T. Chagua, a season ago, split time between double A and single A in the twin system. Again, a second round draft pick back in 2012 out of Rice. Here's his 1-0. Down low, 2-0. Oh. 
Paul Molitor saying earlier on this road trip when the Twins had had a rough series in Toronto. They're at a point right now with some injuries and ineffectiveness. They're, they have relievers who just don't have the experience. They're, they're rushing them. They don't belong here quite yet. The 2-0. Outside, 3-0. and well, You know, every every team runs into a certain amount of that. Uh, it just it seems like the, the, this year is the twins turn in the barrel, and, and it's never fun, you know, when you're having to do that, and, and, uh, and the twins have no choice. Here's a 3-0 pitch. Down low, ball four. Almonte with the walk. And the inning continues for the Indians. As Roberto Perez will step in again. He got it started with a home run. His second on the season. At the time that made it 3-1. to one. Now it is to 7-1 Tribe as they put together a five-run fifth inning. And Perez bats again. Roberto Perez, right-handed hitting catcher with runners at first and second. Shagwa delivers. Breaking ball down low, ball one. Now in case you missed it, earlier today, the Tigers won their game against the White Sox. It was sale against Verlander in the pitching matchup, lived up to advanced billing. Tigers win it 3-2, to two, the 1-0. Strike called on the outside corner. Tyler Collins with a sacrifice fly to score Jacoby Jones, who's just up from the minor leagues, and he's been a spark for Detroit. He scored the winning run in the bottom of the ninth. So as we speak, the Tigers, four back of the tribe. Indians trying to bump it back up to four and a half. Here's the 1-1. Up and in, 2-1. Kansas City came in six and a half back, and they lead the Yankees 2-0 in the top half of the second inning. Kendry Smorales has hit his 22nd home run. And the Royals have red-hot Ian Kennedy on the mound. Two and one the count on Roberto Perez. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball in there for a strike. So two and two on Perez with Jose Ramirez, the base runner at second. Abraham Almonte at first. Tribe up seven to one here in the fifth inning. Now the two two. Down low, ball three. You know, Shagwa has come on and allowed the rest of the runs to score that Dean left on base. So the book is closed on the starter, Pat Dean. He goes four and a third, allowed six runs on seven hits, walked three, and did not strike out a batter. Here's the 3 2. There go the runners, and the pitch is pulled foul to the Indians' dugout on the third base side. Now, Grover, we talk about the Twins' team ERA, highest in the American League by quite a bit. And they just don't strike people out. They have the fewest amount of strikeouts in the American League by a lot. And that's a tough way to go. It's a tough way to go. 3-2 and two the count. And Perez steps away. Their defense is dead last statistically in the American League, so you combo that with the lowest amount of strikeouts, and there's a lot of balls being put into play. That's a recipe good, for trouble. That's not, that's not a good thing. No. Now the payoff pitch. Fouled off again at home plate as Perez continues to battle. You know, this Twins ball club, they they have lost 12 in a row trying to avoid approaching the franchise record of 14 consecutive losses set in 82. And that 1982 team also set the franchise record 
four losses in a season with 102, and, and this team could approach that. If they have a rough September. Now the 3 2 pitch. Up high, ball four. Perez draws the walk, and the bases are loaded again. And there is no activity behind Shaq Wah in that Twins bullpen, at least not yet. At some point, the Twins have got to get some innings out of their relievers. Joe Maurer comes in to have a chat, and here comes Neil Allen, the pitching coach. Indians baseball brought to you in part by Our Lady of the Wayside. If you're paying too much in taxes, consider donating your ride to Our Lady of the Wayside. You'll help a wonderful organization and receive a tax write-off at the same time. They'll take whatever you have, car, truck, boat, RV. Doesn't matter, shape or condition, they'll tow it for free. Call 1-800-368-6262 or visit thewayside.org. They're good people. They are good people. Twins have more action going in their bullpen. Ryan O'Rourke is starting to loosen up. Rajay Davis steps in, one for three. Davis with a bunt base hit his first time up. Pitch to him, swing and a miss. Big cut that time on a breaking ball from Shagwa. Indians seven runs on nine base hits. A run on two hits for the Twins. Here's the 0-1. Waved at and missed strike two. Ramirez, the base runner at third. Almonte at second. And Perez at first. Five runs already in for the Indians. Oh, and two, the count on Davis. Here it comes. Down low for a ball, one and two. Now all this in support of Corey Kluber, who has been sharp so far tonight. And now the opportunity to work with a big lead. One and two to Rajay Davis. Here comes the pitch. Swung on, line drive, caught by the shortstop, Polanco. Another hard hit ball off the bat of an Indians hitter. But this time it's caught and the side is retired. But the Tribe scores five and we'll head to the sixth inning. Just terrific tonight. He's allowed a run on two hits. He's walked one, struck out five. Logan Schaefer bounced to second his first time up. Here's the pitch. And it's on the outside corner for strike one. Schaefer began his season with the Lancaster Barnstormers in the Atlantic League. How about this name for their manager? The 0-1. Waved at and missed. And it's 0-2 on Schaefer. Butch Hobson is the manager for that. Yeah. I, you know, I knew he was somewhere in, um, in independent ball. I didn't uh, I didn't know exactly where. But he could play some third base. Mm -hmm. Had a little pop. <laughs> yeah, a little more than a little. Here comes the 0-2. Fastball high and away. One and two the count. The Atlantic League based mainly on the East Coast. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. They have a team in a little bit closer to New York City and New Jersey. Bridgeport, Connecticut. Here's the one, two. Waved at and missed strike three. Ball drop picked up by Perez. It throws to first to complete the strikeout. So they have all these teams in, in the middle Atlantic states, New England. And then one team in Sugar Land, Texas, which is where Scott Casimir was pitching before the Indians signed him and he had that good year in 2013. But that doesn't seem to fit. They have no. seven teams in the middle real, Atlantic states. Real typical of baseball, though, <laughs> but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to fit. You know, Joe, Klein, that, Joe Klein, if I'm not mistaken, you know, he used to be the general manager here, was the president of that league. I think he's retired I think you're in the right. last year or two. But. Joe's a good man, good baseball man. Here's Brian Dozier. 0 for 1 with a walk, and he fouls the first pitch back for strike one. 
Yeah, Brian Dozier joining some select company last night hit his 12th home run in the month of August, which is the third highest in a single month in Twins history. Harmon Killebrew has the highest. He hit 14 in a month. One of the great home run hitters of all time. One and one to count on Dozier. Here comes Kluber's pitch. Breaking ball on the inside corner for a strike. Boy, he's had a good breaking pitch tonight. Probably say that every night Kluber's pitching, but <laughs> it just seems <laughs> like it's... would be safe to do that. Yeah, he just... Seems like it's breaking sharper tonight. Here comes the one-two delivery. Swung on. There's a chopper to third right there. Ramirez gloves, throws. He gets him. Two up, two down. He's had such, such good command of his fastball tonight. You know, he made that one mistake. He got the ball up out over the plate to, to uh, Kepler. But he's had such command of his fastball that, that it really sets up that, that, that slide of these, the breaking ball he's got. It, and I think the thing absolutely, it, it's, the, the break is so late and so sharp, I swear you can hear the crack when it, when it breaks. It's just a nasty pitch. And, and for a hitter, to, when you're in a hole, uh, can be a devastating pitch. Here's Joe Maurer with two down, base is empty. Kluber delivers outside and high with a fastball for ball one. Kluber's only at 67 pitches here in the sixth inning. Maurer's 0 for 2. Twice he has grounded out one time early on a chopper back to the mound. Kluber made a great play. Here's the 1-0. Swung on, and there's a line drive to left. Going back on it, Almonte won't get this one, and it bounces over his head up against the wall. On his way to second is Maurer. He's in standing up with his 20th double on the season. Boy, vintage Joe Maurer right there, wasn't it? Really was. Yep, he's a, he's a, hits a lot of balls to the left side of second base. That time with power off the wall on one hop. Now in left field. Here's Trevor Plouffe. Plouffe is 0 for 2. A strikeout and a pop out. Playing third base tonight. First time we've seen him there in this series. And that's where he has spent most of his major league career. Right-handed batter. Kluber checks the runner. Now delivers. Swung on. There's a high fly ball. Fairly deep right center. Settling under it, though, and making the catch is Rajay Davis. Davis, just shy of the warning track, puts it away to retire the side. More good pitching by Corey Kluber, and we'll head to the bottom half. New pitcher on for the Twins as we head to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Ryan O'Rourke, a lefty, on the pitch. Takes over from J.T. Chagwaa. Jagua, two-thirds of an inning, allowed a run on two hits in relief of the starter, Pat Dean. He allowed six of the seven tribe runs. Jason Kipnis to lead things off. O'Rourke delivers, and Kipnis slices it foul and out of play, third base side. Ryan O'Rourke is on for the 13th time this season. No wins or losses, an ERA of 3.29. Here's his pitch. Breaking ball, misses outside. Not leaving it up at 1-1 one one on Kipnis, who's 0-2 for 2 with a walk and a run score. Here's O'Rourke's delivery, and it's up high for a ball. Well, Kipnis is going back quietly, having a great year. Here's his 2-1. Swing and a miss, 2-2. Two and two. He was saying yesterday, we had him on the warm-up show yesterday, and he said it, he's had some good stretches. He's done a lot of a lot of good things in his career, but he's never had that good season start to finish consistency-wise. Mm -hmm. So he's extremely happy with how it's gone. and well, He's going to have single-season highs in a lot of offensive categories this year as a result. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Called strike three on the inside corner. Kipnis caught looking. One away in the bottom of the sixth. Brings up Francisco Lindor. Lindor's one for two. 
Make that one for three, Lindor is. A single last inning in that five-run fifth. Ryan O'Rourke is 28 years of age out of Worcester, Massachusetts. Here's the pitch, and it's down low to Lindor. O'Rourke, a product of Merrimack College. And a 13th round pick back in 2010 by the Twins. The 1-0. Outside and high, 2-0. You know, the Indians in their final game in the month of August will have an off day tomorrow, and then the stretch run. Takes place in earnest starting Friday. There's a swing and a bouncing ball through the left side of base hit Lindor. He's now two for four. And yeah, Mike, we touched on it at the beginning. I guess there's the, the dog days of August. The Indians have wrapping up 23 straight days of baseball. And you get that that second win when, when you're in it and you have a lot to play for down the stretch? Well, you do, and in and, and, you know, weather like this. Has a lot to do with it. you. Get a little cooler, and, and uh, you know it's not so hot. You can't hardly breathe. Uh, a lot of those things work together, but, but but certainly being in contention in August, the dog days don't last very long. Here's Mike Napoli. He waves and misses at a breaking ball for strike one. Well, the Indians have have held off both the Tigers and the Royals when both of those clubs have had. Some good stretches of play of late. Indians holding their own. Above 500 for the month of August. Here's the pitch to Napoli. Bounced in there, and the count's now 1-1. One and one. When they lose Michael Brantley for the season, played 11 games early on, that's it. But pretty impressive what they've been able to do offensively without Brantley so far. Well, it really has. You know, Jose Ramirez has stepped in and then, you know, had a great has had a great offensive year. I think any of us, you know, back uh, back in in April and May when, when when Michael went out. Here's the one one inside two and one. Would never have guessed that the, that the Indians' offense would be as productive as it has been, or consistently productive. I mean, we've had. You know, we've gone through spells here, you know, the last week and a half or so who are scoring one or zero runs every night. But Next pitch to Napoli, ripped on the ground, off the glove of the shortstop, Polanco. It trickles into shallow left. Lindor round second, heads for third, and he's in standing up without a throw. That will go as a base hit for Mike Napoli. A rocket off the glove of the shortstop, Polanco. And now it's first and third with only one out for the Tribe. And that guy at the plate who just got the base hit has had a lot to do with it as well. Yes, he has. I'm sure the Indians were counting on some good production from Mike Napoli, but boy, career best in home runs and runs driven in. You know, he, he really he obviously has produced at the plate and, and helped the offense, but his quiet influence, you know, on the field in the clubhouse uh, was real evident even in spring training. That Carlos Santana, the batter, takes ball one. You know that that you know his demeanor had a had a, had a real chance to make it make a difference, and, and and it has. You know, a lot of guys have kind of keyed in on him and, and how he carries himself and how he goes about and plays the game. One and zero, the count. Here's the pitch, swung on, ground ball to short. Polanco to the back for one, Dozier to first, double play, and the side is retired. Indians threaten but do not score, and we'll head to the seventh. It's the Tribe 7, the Twins 1.
here at Progressive Field. Here's the pitch, and it's in there to Sano for strike one. Eddie Rosario next, then Jorge Polanco. Kluber's into the wide. Here comes his 0-1 pitch. Waved at and missed. 0-2 the count on Sano. Now, Corey Kluber trying to continue what has been a tremendous stretch. Since the All-Star break outstanding, really since early July, here's the 0-2. Outside, 1-2 and two the count. He's won six straight. If he wins tonight, it'll be his longest career winning streak. Here's his pitch. Called strike three on the outside corner. Sano caught looking. Seven strikeouts for Kluber. One down in the inning. And those six wins to this point have come in a nine-start stretch. ERA during that time, 1.75. Now, the American League Cy Young race seems to be wide open among quite a few different contenders. Corey Kluber is trying to make sure his name stays in there to the very end. Yes. I should probably rephrase that as Rosario takes a pitch inside. I think Kluber could care less. He just cares about this team <laughs> getting to postseason. If it happens in the end, he'll, he'll take it certainly, but that's the last thing on his mind. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one. Well, that's why he's such a good teammate. That's why his teammates respect him. You know, there's he, he's not phony. Nope. You know, he doesn't he doesn't uh, he goes out and does his job and and uh, does it well. Here comes his one one pitch. Swung on a chopper foul outside of first. Counts now one and two. Well, his preparation. In the off season to get ready for a new season is second to none. That's why he has had some outstanding second halves. 2014, it, it was his September that clinched the Cy Young. He was tremendous in the season's final month. Here comes his one-two. Swing and a miss, strike three. And another Twins hitter goes down on strikes. The eighth strikeout for Kluber. Two down here in the seventh with the Tribe in front, seven to one. One of my pet peeves, since you asked. Uh-oh. <laughs> Rosario swung that last pitch and turned around and asked the umpire who was a strike. You know, just read it. <laughs> and one of my pet peeves, I used to tell my hitters, don't turn around and ask him if it's a strike or not. Because if, if, if you take a pitch, it's a close pitch, you call it, you know, it, it, or you swing at it and turn around and say, was that a strike? Then there's Jorge Polanco, and he takes strike one. You're telling the umpire you don't know the strike zone. So if you do that, you really relinquish your right to scream at him in the ninth inning when he punches you out on, on a pitch that you know is on a strike. I said, don't ask him if it's a strike. If you have to ask, it probably was. Here's the 0-1, and that's Sky down the line, left side, and out of play. Glad we brought that up. Yeah, well, I just saw him do that. And just all of a sudden, I got goosebumps. <laughs> Used to hate that when you hit her swinging a ball. And he turned around and said, was that, was that a strike? Well, you swung at it. Oh, and You the, tell me. <laughs> oh, and two on Polanco. Let's see if he swings. Here's the pitch. He swings and pops it up foul and out of play behind the Tribe dugout. So it remains 0-2 oh on Polanco. Hey, right now at Burger King, get two delicious croissant breakfast sandwiches for just $4 only at Burger King. Tribe and Twins, finale of this series. They'll play another series in Minneapolis. Three games, not this weekend, but next weekend. And then that's it. That'll wrap up the season series. Here's the 0-2. Swung on, line drive over the glove of Napoli, down the right field line. Getting to it quickly is Chisenhall, but on his way to second is Polanco, and he's in with a two-out double. Let's pause 10 seconds for station ID on the Indians radio network. Jim Rosenhouse along with Mike Hargrove, Stephanie Hagel in the booth, Brian Matze back at network control on 
A nice Wednesday night for baseball downtown. 75 degrees at game time. Nice breeze. The rain has stayed away. And the Indians lead at 7-1 as Max Kepler steps in, facing Corey Kluber. The pitch. Breaking ball down low. Ball one. Kepler tied the game at the time back in the third inning with a solo home run. His 16th home run on the season, five of which have come against Indians pitching. Left-handed hitter, open stance. Here's the 1-0. Breaking ball down low, 2-0. Indians with seven runs on 11 hits. Minnesota, one run, four base hits. Both teams playing airless baseball. Indians took the early lead on an Almonte double that brought in a run in the second. Then Kepler's home run tied it in the third. Indians took the lead again in the fourth on a home run from Carlos Santana. Here's the pitch to Kepler. Up high for a ball. Then the Tribe blew it open with five in the fifth inning. RBI single from Santana. Jose Ramirez, two-run double. Roberto Perez with a home run as well. Here's Kluber's 3-0. And he missed low and outside for ball four. So the Twins have a couple of men aboard here as they've gotten something going with two down. A double by Polanco and now the walk to Kepler. Brings up Juan Centeno. Try bullpens quiet. Kluber at 85 pitches here in the seventh. Centeno is 0 for 2. He has bounced to first and struck out in two trips. Now Kluber's ready. Here it comes. Fastball strike on the outside corner. Juan Centeno getting the start in two of the three games in this series. Kurt Suzuki, the other catcher for Minnesota, was the frontline catcher most of the year. Owen won the count. Here's Kluber's pitch. Up high. One and one the count on Centeno. Full house in the Hardgrove suite tonight? Um, no, I think there's uh, I think there's only eight to ten people over there. Yeah. Western Ak- Akron Baseball League, uh, the little league, the wobble. They they. Uh, the one one swing and a miss. Sharon's hosting them tonight. Nice. Yep. Now She's good say, at that. You always say Sharon is hosting in the suite. You- well, she does all the talking. <laughs> I listen. I'm leading you down a path <laughs> you to get are. in trouble here. I'm, I'm sorry. Trouble, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll no, they're, they're nice people. They do. Wobble, that's a great organization, great little league. They've really built that up to where it's a it's a real dynamite little league organization. Here's the one two pitch. Low and in. And the count's now two and two on Juan Centeno. Indians leading at 7-1. to one. We're in the top half of the seventh inning. Detroit has already won its game today. They defeated the White Sox this afternoon. Kansas City leading the Yankees 4-0 in the bottom of the third at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. Indians in that great position, though, where if they win, it doesn't matter what the other teams do on the scoreboard. Here comes the 2-2. Swung on, fouled away, third base side, now to play. So we'll do it again at 2-2 two two on Juan Centeno. Polanco, the base runner at second, Kepler at first. Kluber looking for that put-away pitch here on 2-2 two two to Juan Centeno. Left-handed hitting catcher. Saw some time in the big leagues with the Brewers a year ago. Here comes the pitch. Just a bit inside. Didn't miss by much. And it's 3-2. and two. Kluber rarely looks in at the home plate umpire. He did right there. 
And reason being, he gets that great tailing action on the fastball, and a lot of times that'll come back and catch the inside corner. The hitter gives up on it, and you wonder if sometimes the umpire does too. I think they go blind sometimes. Or that. <laughs> Here, here's the 3-2. Swung on, foul back, and out of play. So we'll do it again on 3-2. and two. Did you ever tell him that when, when you were managing? Yeah. Did maybe, that ever come yeah, up in, maybe, in casual conversation maybe. or arguments? But what, the conversation wasn't casual, but it sure did come up. <laughs> they seemed to always win those arguments over. I mean, one time, they couldn't let you win? Never. Three and two the count on Centeno. Here it comes. Called strike three on the inside corner. There it was. Centeno caught looking, and the side is retired. Kluber has nine strikeouts, and we have reached the stretch at Progressive Field with the score. The Tribe seven. And facing left-hander Ryan O'Rourke. Third pitcher tonight for the Twins. And here's his pitch. It's down low to Ramirez for ball one. Another good night at the plate for Jose Ramirez. Two for two with a walk. A double. A couple of runs batted in. The pitch to him. Fastball strike on the inside corner. One and one to count on Ramirez. Lonnie Chisenhall next, and then Abe Almonte. Next offering to Ramirez is swung on and fouled back. Jose Ramirez locked in now at third base for the Indians. But, man, did he help them out early in the season and left as he swings and fouls one back again. And Grover, he played a little bit of outfield in, in winter ball, but what he did with the absence of Michael Brantley early on playing in left field, not easy and, and yet still has put together a great season. Here's the one two, way inside, two and two. Well, he's a good athlete. I mean, and, he, and he's a baseball player. I mean, he's, he's not specialized in any one thing. He, obviously, he's a better infielder than he is outfielder because he's played more of those. Positions, but he can play every position in the, in the infield and, and uh, did a great job in left field. The 2-2 two -two waved at and missed strike three. Good breaking pitch that time from O'Rourke. And Ramirez is down on strikes. The second for O'Rourke since coming on last inning. Here's Lonnie Chisenhall. Chisenhall came on as a pinch hitter in the fifth and drove in a run with a sack fly. <laughs> he has stayed in the game in right field. You know, the Indians trying to make it three straight over Minnesota and continue what has been a great stretch of play here as Chisenhall takes a strike on the outside corner. The Indians at home have the fourth best record in the American League overall at home, but a major league best record of 29 and 11 since June the 1st. Chisenhall fouls one off, third base side. It's not too bad, huh? They have played extremely well here. They have eight walk-off wins after Monday night's 10th inning victory. The 0-2 swung on, popped up, foul, third base side. Plouffe near the sidewall makes the catch just in front of the seats. Chisenhall retired. Two away here in the 7th, and that will bring up Abraham Almonte. Well, I guess he can get on a roll and feel comfortable and your own ballpark, which you should, doesn't always work out that way. No, it doesn't. <clears throat> no, it doesn't. But uh, but it sure is nice. You know, you sleep in your own bed and be able to eat home cooked meals and come to the ballpark and, and play baseball. What? Abraham Almonte takes a pitch outside. It's a pretty good life. It's not bad. Almonte, one for two. RBI double his first time up. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, missed inside. And it counts now 2-0 and on Almonte. Indians leading 7-1 to here in the seventh inning. 
Here's the pitch. Swung on. There's a chopper to the right side. Scooped up by Dozier. The second baseman throws to the pitcher covering, and it's in time. Side retired in order. We've played seven at Progressive Field. Tribe seven, twins one to pair tonight, but that's it. He'll face the number nine hitter, Logan Schaefer, who's 0 for 2. He's bounced to second and struck out. Indians do have some action going in their bullpen. Michael Michael Clevenger starting to heat it up for the Tribe as Kluber delivers strike one to Schaefer. Well, Kluber has done what your ace needs to do, and this is really several starts in a row where he has done that. The 0-1 bounced in there, and it's 1-1. and Mike Hargrove last Friday night in Texas. The Indians had dropped three in a row. They had yet to lose four straight games at any point this season, and Kluber came out and battled against a pretty good Texas Rangers lineup, and the Indians ended up winning it handily, but... His pitching was the big key. Oh, yeah. Yep. And that's you know, that's the job of your number one guy. He's a stopper. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swung on line past the third baseman, Ramirez, into left field. A base hit for Schaefer. Leadoff single here in the eighth inning. And now tonight, on a night where the Indians needed a lengthy start from Kluber, he has delivered. He's gotten the game into the eighth inning. Top of the lineup, Brian Dozier steps in. Dozier is 0 for 2 with a walk. He has been the Twins' most productive hitter. A lot of the season spent in the leadoff spot, yet he leads their team in home runs and runs driven in. Here's the pitch to him. Swung on, and there's a high fly ball deep left field, and Dozier has done it again. Home run into the bleachers. Ryan Dozier has hit his 32nd home run of the year. And it's now the Tribe 7, the Twins 3. Wow. And there it is, home run number 13 in the month of August for Brian Dozier. He probably won't get another chance to attempt to tie the franchise record held by Harmon Killebrew for 14 home runs in one month. But what a month it has been for Dozier and Mickey Calloway's out to the mound to have a chat with Corey Kluber. Next time you're looking for Indians tickets, get the StubHub app. Don't forget you'll get the best seats for your buck when you sort by value with the StubHub app. That big weekend coming up with the Marlins coming to town. I know you'll be here for this one, Grover. Carlos Baerga jersey night on Saturday night. I'll be, I'll be here. I'll have my Baerga shirt on. You won't have the jersey? No. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't have his jersey. Do Carlos you? is in town already. He's fired up. He's always in town. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos is a good man. Here's Joe Maurer. Here's the pitch. And it's on the outside corner for a strike. You see Carlos, and he and everyone who's around him, they're always smiling. You can't help but smile. (laughs) Everyone's having a good time. Here comes the 0-1 pitch to Maurer. Breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike. When did it hit you that that he was going to be one of the, the key guys in that run in the 90s? Um... You know, I saw him, uh, him and Sandy Alomar, both in uh, in uh, AAA. Played, they played for Las Vegas with the Padres. And uh, here comes the 0-2 pitch. Bauer pops it up foul and out of play. You know, every, everybody likes Sandy. You know, I mean, all the scouts and baseball people because Sandy was who Sandy was. Um, but Byer was playing third base for the Padres at the AAA club, and, and uh, I really did. I liked his arm. I liked his energy. Uh, he just uh, he had a lot of energy, and it translated to his teammates. Here comes the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Strikeout number 10 for Corey Kluber. And really, you know, really came to the decision, you know, uh, it, when he came over here and, and, and I was managing, um, that to try to take that energy he has and put it in the middle of the field so everybody could feed off of it. And uh, 
And that was kind of, that's probably when I first thought, you know, this kid has a chance to, really has a chance to, to be a difference maker. Uh, and he certainly was. I mean, he. Here's Trevor Plouffe. He takes strike one. Career, now, Carlos Baeger certainly as big a key as, as anybody to some of those great teams in the 90s. Here comes the pitch to Ploof. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Kluber with those 10 strikeouts has equaled his season high. Only one other time has he been in double figures in strikeouts. That was back on April the 23rd at Detroit. Can set a new season high right here with the 0-2 pitch on its way. Outside and high, 1-2. and two. Well, A lot of people don't, probably don't know this or realize this, but the, the, the last month and into the, into the uh, postseason and World Series, Carlos played with a, from 95, played with a really bad uh, ankle. And uh, Here's the 1-2 pitch. Swung on, a tapper to the shortstop, charging Lindor. Scoops, fires, in time at first. Close play. Ploof is retired. Two down in the inning. Seven to three. The Indians lead the Twins here in the eighth. And Miguel Sano will step to the plate. And the, well, it always seems like the, the great players, they might be a little bit dinged up at certain points in the season, but you'd never know it. Yeah, you're, it's hard to go through a full season without having something. Some aching, and uh, but the good ones, uh, the good ones stick it out and, and play through the pain. Here's the pitch, low and outside, ball one to Miguel Sano. Certainly easier said than done. Now Kluber's into the line. Here comes his 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss. One and one, the count on Sano. Boy, he has fed him a steady diet of those hard breaking pitches. And Sano has not had much of a chance tonight. He struck out twice and tapped weakly to first. Here's the 1-1. Swung on, popped up foul into the upper deck over on the first base side. 1-2 and two the count on Sano. I would bet he doesn't see another fastball. Yeah. Hard curve in the dirt. Left Any, side batter's box. Anything. Here comes the one-two pitch to Sano. Breaking ball, swung on and missed, strike three. Side retired, 11 strikeouts for Corey Kluber, who most likely is done for the night, and he's getting a standing O. As he and Roberto Perez will lead things off for the Tribe. Indians leading it 7-3 to three over the Twins. Ryan O'Rourke. Staying on for Minnesota, the left-hander, and Perez takes a strike on the outside corner. Perez with his second home run of the season back in the fifth inning. That started what turned out to be a five-run fifth that broke this game open. O'Rourke delivers, and Perez takes a strike on the outside corner. Indians with seven runs on 11 hits. Twins, three runs on six base hits. O'Rourke lets it fly, and his pitch is low and outside for a ball. Ryan O'Rourke reached the major leagues for the first time last season. That was his sixth year in the Twins organization. And he's been up and back several times between AAA and the big leagues this year. The 1-2. Called strike three on the outside corner at the knees. And Roberto Perez is retired. Third strikeout for O'Rourke, who came on in the sixth. Try baseball brought to you by Valero, home of top-tier detergent gasolines that help keep your engine clean and running its best. Valero, the power of the American dream. Top of the lineup, Rajay Davis steps in. Pitch to him. Swung on, fouled off at home plate. That got a piece of the catcher again. Juan Centeno's had a tough night behind the plate. Time for the Metro Toyota drive to the next series, and the next series for the Tribe opens Friday night right here at Progressive Field. After an off day tomorrow, the 
Miami Marlins come in. Friday and Saturday nights at 7-10. Sunday late afternoon, a 4-10 first pitch. And uh, that's to allow fans to go see the air show earlier in the day Sweet. and then come watch some tribe baseball later in the day. 4-10, first pitch Sunday. Here's the 1-1. Swung on, bounced foul outside of first. 1-2 and two to count. Bobby D always tells stories about when the air show at the old ballpark. At the old ballpark oh, yeah. when the air show would take place. Oh, A little wow. different story down there, huh? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the Blue Angels were coming through one day and, and were doing their performance. And, and I happened to you, you, you. If you don't see them, come, you, don't, you don't hear them until they're already gone. And they came in the open end of the old, old ballpark, the one who was doing the flybys. And I'm telling you, I saw him coming, and I thought, what's he doing? And I swear I thought he was going to run right into the stands behind home plate. And just pulled up. It was absolutely put goosebumps on your toenails. I mean, it was. The one-two to Davis fouled off at home plate again. Or was it? O'Rourke came in, picked it up, and tagged Davis. And yes, indeed, was a foul ball. But it was amazing. I mean, it was a, it was absolutely amazing what those guys would do and how fast they go. Well. we'll We'll see them out here all weekend long as they fly over the ballpark here quite a bit. Not quite as close as they, <laughs> they came to the old place down on the lakefront. Here's the one two. Bounced in there, and it's now two and two. So Friday and Saturday night, 7 10. Sunday afternoon, 4 10. Tickets available at Indians.com. Drive up 7 to 3. We're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Here's the pitch. Swung on, line foul down the line, right side, and out of play. Oh, my. What a catch by a fan with no glove on a screamer off the bat of Rajay Davis. That was impressive. I'm telling you, his hand is hurting right now. Boy, I don't know. He's, no rub. Here's the pitch. And there's a swing and a pop-up foul out of play. First base side behind the dugout. I mean, that guy didn't even, he left the ball in his, maybe it was stuck in his hand. <laughs> he embedded, you're right. Trying to get the the laces that are imprinted on his hand now <laughs> out of there. Whew. Two and two the count on Rajay Davis. One for four on the night is Davis. O'Rourke delivers, swung on, line drive, base hit left center field. This one splits the gap, goes to the wall. Davis is flying to second base, and he is in with a stand-up double. Now Rajay Davis has had a strong series here against the Twins. That's his sixth hit in the three games. And he has gone through some stretches where he has been red hot at the plate. And trying to take advantage of a nice stretch of play here against left-handed pitching. Jason Kipnis will step in. Kipnis, 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored. One out in the inning. Indians with a runner at second base. Here's the pitch. There goes Davis to third. The throw, not in time. Rajay Davis steals third with less than two down. And his stolen base, number 34. Indians up by four, but well, you'd like, like to tack on another run or two if you can. And For Davis, number 34 in the season. Please. Davis swipes third. Now the, the Twins have to bring the infield in on Kipnis. Here's the 0-1. Swung on, popped up foul. Behind the Indians dugout, third base side. Mike Clevenger still loosening in the tri-pen. We'll see him in the ninth inning. Certainly looks like Corey Kluber's night is done. Or excuse me, Percy Garner is the pitcher loosening in the pen for the tribe. Just up from AAA, along with Brian Shaw, who's also out there. Here's the 0-2 outside, 1-2. and two. Kluber was at 109 pitches at the end of eight innings. The pitch to Kipnis, swung on, popped up foul and out of play. 
third base side. Kipnis hanging tough here with two strikes. The Indians trying to bump that lead back up to four and a half over the Tigers. And the Indians with a five game lead in the loss column. The one two swung on. There's a high fly ball left center. This will get the run in as Schaefer's under it. He makes the catch. Tagging, heading for home, and scoring easily is Rajay Davis. Nice work by Jason Kipnis to plate the run, and the Indians now lead it 8-3. to three. Great at bat. Great at bat. He stayed in the middle of the field trying to, you know, take that slider away from the left-hander. Did that, finally got his foul off a fastball, and finally got that one to hit the deep left center field. That was a good at bat. He battled really hard. And that's been the story of his season, really yeah. quality at bats. That's using but, a whole lot of talent and a little bit of intelligence. I don't mean he has a little bit of intelligence. Right. I mean, Boy, using why, why a little would bit you of say that about him? him? Well, I didn't say that about <laughs> him, Rosie. <laughs> the guys like you that get guys like me in trouble. <laughs> oh, how, I, he I probably big, will never find out that that was said. Oh, no, not at all. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> Here's Frankie Lindor who takes a strike, and it's one and one. You must remember I'm bigger than you now. That's true. So is Hammy. It's been a rough summer. <laughs> <laughs> now the one one. Swung on, and there's a line drive. Left center field. Long run Schaefer, and he makes the running catch to retire Lindor and the Indians. Schaefer's been kind of impressive tonight. You know, for a guy coming out of the independent leagues, obviously somebody gave up on him, or a lot of somebody's gave up on him. The three, and it's the major league debut for Ohio born and raised Percy Garner. Just up from AAA Columbus earlier today. And as Terry Francona said, after meeting with Garner for about 20 minutes, he said he may already lead the American League in smiles. This is one of the uh, most happy people you'll ever meet, and we've only known him for a little while, but Garner is on to pitch here in the ninth, and his first pitch is down low for ball one. A lot of friends and family here for Garner tonight, and he gets in the game in the ninth inning, protecting a five-run lead, facing Eddie Rosario with a count of 1-0. and oh. Garner works from the stretch. Here's his pitch. Swung on, lined, base hit into right field. Rosario aboard on a leadoff single. And it's a leadoff base runner for the Twins. Now Garner throws hard, good sinking fastball. That is the bread and butter pitch. And if you were tuned into Indians warm up tonight, Carter Hawkins, the Indians farm director, talking about what has made Garner's season, and it's really more than just this season. It's a great story about scouting and development again of pitching by the Indians. He faces Jorge Polanco, the pitch, and it's on just a bit outside for ball one. The most recent Percy Garner was at AAA Columbus for much of the season. Overall, in the minor leagues between AA and AAA, 41 appearances. Here's his pitch, and it's swung on and fouled off for strike one. He was 7-1 and one with an ERA of 2.06, 70 strikeouts in 78 and two-thirds innings. But for Garner, his pro career started with the Phillies. But he just wasn't making much progress in their system. They released him in 2014. Here's the 1-1. Fastball, strike called on the inside corner, one and two. The Indians picked him up on the advice of scout Mike Kalitri, sent him to extended spring training, worked on his delivery to help him with his command, and he has shot through the system, and here he is in the big leagues. Here's the one-two pitch, low and in. Now moves to two and two. He's out of Dover, Ohio. Percy Garner, big kid, 6'3", about 225. The right-hander's ready. Here's his 2-2. Swung on and fouled off. And the count remains two and two. Garner came up today replacing Sean Armstrong, who was optioned 
to Lake County with the idea that he'll be back soon. But a great opportunity for this young man who has worked hard to get where he is now. And Indians are excited to see him. Terry Francona saying you never know. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on, popped up, foul, third base side, not a play. They'll look at him here in September as much as they can with a team in a pennant chase and see what they have. But certainly the reports coming out of the Indians minor league system, most recently at AAA Columbus, were very, very good on Percy Garner. Trying to get it done here in the ninth inning with a runner at first. Nobody out. Tribe in front by five runs. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and foul tipped. And Polanco with a strong at bat here. Fouling off several two strike pitches. Grover, major league debut for this guy. And I mean, you, you had a lot of guys make that debut while you were managing. And I know you, you try and find the perfect spot for mm -hmm. them. But I, I guess it, it's hard to do sometimes. It's it really, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's hard. It, but The 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on. Line drive in the center, and that falls in. Base hit. Polanco moving up to second is Rosario, and the Twins have opened with back-to-back -back singles. Usually when you do bring them in in a situation like this, that, uh, you know, to, to, you know, to give them, get them over that hump, get their first first taste of it, you usually have somebody up in the bullpen along with them and, and – uh, I'll never forget, we had, I had Derek Lowe, and we brought him up from Double A when I was in Seattle. And uh, Derek threw hard and had a good slider. And so I brought him in a game, we were like eight, eight runs up, and he walks the first three hitters on 12 pitches. And I'm thinking, oh, this is not going good. The next nine pitches, he struck out three guys. <laughs> he got over the hump and, and settled in very nicely after that. We'll see if Garner can do the same after allowing back-to-back -back singles first two hitters. Here's Max Kepler, and he takes strike one on the inside corner. Boy, 95, 96, 97 from Garner on a lot of this hard stuff. Kepler homered back in the third inning. He's one for two with a walk. The pitch to him. Strike two called on the inside corner. 97 with the fastball that time. Garner wearing number 66 as he looks in at Roberto Perez for the sign. Here's his 0-2. Down low. 1-2. and two. And that's something that Terry Francona talked about before the game tonight with Garner that just the work that the Indians development staff does, especially with pitching. And here's a, another example of that. Percy Garner reaching the major leagues after two years ago, released by the Phillies. It's amazing, isn't it? Out of double A. But you get the right people in the right situation, and, and they can make a difference. Here's the one-two. Swung on, bounced foul outside of first base. All right, just like you can never have enough starting pitching, you can never have enough arms in that bullpen. Available arms, you love to have power arms, and they certainly have that with Garner. Well, you can make more mistakes with a, you know, with throwing the ball 96, 97 than you can throwing 91, 90, 92. Uh, but our minor league people have done a tremendous job with a number of our players. The one-two pitch. Breaking ball fouled off at home plate, and we'll do it again on one and two. Yeah, at least to the last two hitters here, Garner having a tough time with two strikes putting them away. He has already made 15 pitches to just three hitters. First and second, nobody out. Here's his pitch. Waved at and missed strike three, and Percy Garner records his first major league strikeout. And Roberto Perez tosses that one over to the dugout. They'll save that one for Percy Garner. Juan Centeno will be pulled back. Pinch hit for by Eduardo Escobar. Escobar. 
Escobar, switch hitter, stands in from the left side. On the season, hitting 266 with five homers, 33 runs driven in. Garner working from the stretch. Here's his pinch. Strike call on the outside corner. Corey Kluber started, went eight innings, allowed three runs on six hits, walked two, struck out 11. Was just what the doctor ordered tonight, pitching eight innings on a night where the Indians needed it badly. Here's the 0-1. Swung on. There's a slow chopper to the first baseman. Napoli's up with it. Steps on the bag in time. Escobar's retired. The runners advance to second and third, but now two down. And Logan Schaefer will step in. Now, this is not a save situation for Garner, but he didn't have seven saves in the minor leagues, so he's been in that end game situation before. And trying to close this one out for the Tribe here in the ninth with the Indians in front, 8-3. to three. Logan Schaefer, the number nine hitter, one for three on the night. Here's Garner's pitch. Down low, ball one. Fans on their feet here at Progressive Field. 11,811, the attendance tonight. One and oh, the count on Schaefer. Garner from the stretch. Here's his pitch. Down low, two and oh, the count. Well, they'd love to stay away from Brian Dozier. You think? With the bases loaded, potentially. Five-run lead for the Indians. Dozier, the biggest power threat in that Twins lineup. Here's the 2-0. Down low, ball three. Might well, be interesting to see what Terry Francona does if Schaefer reaches. Shaw's ready in the pen. Well, you got a five-run lead. You, you, know, you know, I think that Terry will go ahead and let him finish. You know, if, if the bases are on, I think he'll let him go ahead and face Dozier, have Shaw to come in if he, you know, if, if, if by chance he gets on. The 3-0. Down low, ball four. Schaefer walks on four pitches. And here comes Tito. He will not let Garner continue as the bases are loaded. He wants Brian Shaw right here. So we'll have a pitching change in the night. The score, the Tribe 8, Minnesota 3. Hey, Mark, your 930 appointment is here. I got to reschedule. How does next spring sound? Putting things off until you've had your coffee makes you a pro-caffeinator. Fortunately, McDonald's Dollar Any Size McCafe coffee is here. Any size, all day. Maybe Ryan Dozier, the batter, homered his last time up, his 32nd home run on the season. Up there now with the bases full. Here's the pitch. Down low, ball one. Shaw with that good cut fastball. And also the slider. Eight to three, Indians lead. As Shaw comes set. Here's his pitch. Strike called on the inside corner. One and one the count on Brian Dozier. 32 home runs. 13 have come in the month of August. He has been red hot. Really throughout the second half of the season. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Called strike two on the outside corner. And now Shaw can end it with a strikeout. Dozier digs back in. Shaw picks up the sign from Roberto Perez. Now he's ready. And the 1-2 pitch. Up and in and gets past Perez back to the screen. That will allow Rosario to score from third. So it's now 8-4 on the wild pitch by Brian Shaw. He came up and in that time. And it tipped off the glove of Roberto Perez. The other runners move up. 
And the Twins are now to within four. Two and two the count. Shaw ready to go. Set to the belt. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And the Indians win it. They sweep the Twins behind great pitching from Corey Kluber. A big fifth inning. And the Tribe wins it 8-4. to four. Stay with us. We're back with our Key Bank Keys to the game after this timeout. Long winning streaks are hard in baseball. Maybe easier now when it comes to your financial life. Consider the hassle-free account from KeyBank. No maintenance fees, no service charges, no overdraft fees. With it, you just keep piling up the wins. It's one of the best managerial moves you'll ever make. And for a limited time, get $100 when transaction requirements are met for opening an account. That's what they call a win on top of a win. KeyBank. Use the red key. Member FDIC. Banking home of the Cleveland Indians. If you're scouting for an all-star health insurance plan for yourself, your family, or your business, take a close look at Medical Mutual. We're the health insurance company Ohioans can trust in any inning. We have the experience and a network of doctors and hospitals to cover all your bases. And our team is always warmed up and ready to deliver award-winning customer service. For all your health insurance needs, make the call to Medical Mutual, the official health insurer of your Cleveland Indians. Visit 